Demi saying that these girls are really mean. I'm overwhelmed, Matt. I don't know how you did it. Hey, Bachelor Nation, welcome to tonight's episode of Bachelor Bracket. I'm your host, Jess Lucero. We have so much to discuss from tonight's episode. I have chills all over my body still. We have newly found Katie stands. We have Sarah leaving this season entirely. We have mean girls. We have new girls coming on the show and so much more to discuss on tonight's episode of Bachelor Bracket. Stay tuned. Let's start by talking about how Matt James has once again done an incredible job of being The Bachelor. He has probably done the best job that I have ever seen any man or any woman do on The Bachelor or Bachelorette because he has made a point to go out of his way and comfort anyone who seems like they are struggling. For example, in this episode, we saw that Sarah was really struggling and she prepared herself to enter something like this where she would be away from her family for a while and where she would be competing with a bunch of other women for a man's love. But you can never fully prepare yourself for something like this. You never know how difficult this is going to be. And you never know how much you're gonna miss your dad who she mentioned in this episode only has weeks left. She doesn't know exactly how long he's going to be with her for, but you kind of have to prepare for the worst. And in her case, she's going into this thinking that her dad is only gonna be there for a couple more weeks. And so it's hard, it's daunting on her. As much as she knows that Matt is an incredible guy, she ended up ending her journey on The Bachelor. Now, there is a slight chance that she could return but I don't know if I necessarily see that happening considering her dad's situation, her whole family situation. You know, she did end up having to leave her broadcast job out in Palm Springs so that she could be with her dad. And I think that until her dad's time has come, I think this just may be what's right for her is to stay at home and be as close to her family as possible. The back half of this episode, I was holding back tears. I had chills, you saw my arm. But he has a terminal illness and like it's not like years it's or months it's like maybe like weeks my dad passed away in 2012 so i 100 encourage you to be with him this was such a raw and real episode we learned so much about these women even the moment between Katie and Sarah was a huge moment because we've only seen Katie as this jokester, but now she comes out and she says, I lost my dad at this age, I completely understand. She started off by saying, no, you should stay here because if you and Matt James are meant to be, then you don't want to potentially ruin that from happening. But then she hears about Sarah's dad and she says, you know what, like don't miss out on this moment to potentially share your, your dad's last few moments with him. This has to be one of the strongest episodes that I've ever seen in Bachelor history. Matt did an incredible job of comforting her as much as he possibly could. There is a chance that they might meet after this show for all we know. And that's not a spoiler alert because I'm just spitballing here, but I think they did have a very strong connection and the way he comforted her was as though they had been together for some time. He knew exactly what to do, exactly what to say. And we have to applaud Katie who really did such a great job. We have no choice but to stand Katie. To be completely honest, I kind of forgot that there was a group day at the beginning of this episode because there was so much that happened after the group date, but let's talk about it just for a quick second. It was basically a bunch of girls were on this group date. They were writing some sort of story, love story, and it could be as sexual as you wanted or just about love or G-rated or whatever you want. Katie, you couldn't hear any of hers because it was all bleeped out the entire time. I was dying laughing because I didn't know what she was saying. It was just one long bleep. Matt picked up Katie, eager to kiss her. She could feel his <laughs> while she <laughs> with excitement. <laughs> Before he set her down, he <laughs> teasing her. This was almost Victoria's coming out episode. It was like a really 
strong moment for her. It seemed like a lot of the girls were really starting to like her. When you go on Twitter, you saw a lot of people starting to admire her personality. She's really funny. She definitely has her moments. She had a line at the very end of her little skit where she said something like, All of the boats and none of the hoes will be there. Her entire skit was really funny and I felt like we were seeing a different side of her so maybe she is reaching the point of getting a little more comfortable. Then you fast forward to the part where Sarah comes on the group date and she sort of crashes the group date so to speak. And Victoria was really egging it on. It was kind of back to square one with her. She told Katie get back there it was just like she was acting in previous weeks where she's telling people how to act and how they should stand up for themselves and everyone has a different personality like i appreciate someone who uh wants girls to stand up for themselves but it's very obvious that sarah was going through something uh she wasn't just coming there to take away time from the other girls. Victoria was really egging it on and I felt like that's why a lot of the other girls also started attacking Sarah later on in the episode when Sarah had her moment where she was trying to apologize to her and Victoria comes out and says, I don't accept your apology. And then Kit is over here being a mean girl as well. Serena C is being a mean girl as well. Sarah even tried to grab MJ after the fact and MJ said, no, I, I need to cool down and just stormed off. And I understand when you are a little hot headed, like you don't want to chat with someone, especially the person that you're, you're hot headed with or the person that you're angry at. But these girls didn't even hear Sarah out. They didn't really give her the chance to fully explain herself and everything that she's going through. Evidently, they just all kept saying like, oh, she's not even coming down. And then she comes down and then they get mad when she comes down. It was the same thing with when Sarah did go to speak with Matt in the first place. She went out to all the girls afterwards and said, listen, I'm so sorry. Like, I want you to hear this from me and no one else. I thought that was very mature of her. Instead, everyone got so mad that she even came to them after the fact. You should have come to us first. Do you really think that would have made any difference? No. This was all just so many first world problems watching this entire episode. Before we get into our bachelor bracket, let's take a look at some of this week's fantasy tweets. During the moment where Sarah was really getting attacked by all of the other women, primarily Victoria, Kit, MJ, and Serena C, I, that's when I was really scrolling through. I was glad to see a lot of Bachelor Nation saying how big of bullies these girls were being because this was not just a moment where only in Sarah's head it looked like she was being bullied. It really looked like she was being bullied. When you are in the majority, it's much easier for you to speak out. But no one stood up for her either. We had tweets from Demi saying that these girls are really mean. We had tweets from Nick Vial saying bullying ain't cool, which is so accurate. That's exactly what this felt like. This was like high school all over again. She didn't even do anything wrong. Let's be honest here. She genuinely felt like leaving and was just going to chat with him. It was great to see Katie go and comfort her at the end and because of that there are so many tweets going viral right now saying how much we stand katie how everyone wants her to be engaged at the end of this or how they want her to be the next bachelorette and yes that's great but i think if katie felt this way she should have spoken up and i know katie was not the only one who felt that way because when she came to the group after the fact to tell them listen i spoke with sarah and she decided she's gonna leave but i didn't want her to feel like she was leaving because all the girls were bullying her and a ton of the girls were shaking their head yeah 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 if you felt like there was bullying going on why were you just sitting there and letting it happen i was very heated tonight so clearly i need to take a breather uh whew. I need to take a deep breath in, do some yoga after this. I think I just really put myself in Sarah's shoes and I felt so sorry for her. Let's get into our bachelor bracket where we see who's gonna get a rose at the next rose ceremony. Now see, this one is actually going to be difficult because we're getting five more girls as soon as next week. So right here, I have 15 girls who are supposed to get roses, two of which have already been handed out, but 
Now we're getting five more girls, so are we set back? two weeks potentially. Rachel and Serena P already received roses so I'm gonna say that Brie is going to be the first person to receive a rose at the rose ceremony. Then we're gonna go with Abigail to get the next rose. After that I'll say Katie she had a very strong week. Next up let's go with Kayla. I think this might be the week that Victoria gets sent home especially after Matt seeing her being involved in every piece of drama that has gone down at the house. Uh, I think Kit might also go home. Jasenia, we'll say Jasenia gets a rose. We'll say Maggie will get a rose. Lauren will get a rose. So we have two girls left who are set to get roses. I think Victoria is going home. I flopped her for MJ. So I say Victoria's going home. Kit is going home and Chelsea is going home just because I really haven't heard from her since the first week and even then it was very slim so maybe we're just not entirely seeing um, whenever her and Matt have a conversation but at this point we should be hearing a little bit more from you by now if if you are going to have a larger role in the show so this is what I'm sticking with let me know if you agree with me or if you think Victoria is going to make it past this week she just seems to be the topic of conversation every single week. It's driving me insane. <laughs> so we're supposed to go from 18 girls to potentially 15 and then back up to 20 or 18 girls and then up to 23 girls. This is madness. Have we ever had this many people on one show? I mean, I know last season was also kind of similar to this, but this is a lot. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed, Matt. I don't know how you did it. So if you've made it to this point, I want you to comment if you agree with my choices on my bracket. And I want you to comment which tweet was your favorite of the night. There were so many good tweets to go through. Thank you to everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of Bachelor Bracket. I'm your host, Jess Lucero. Thank you to Bachelor Nation for giving us great tweets and Bachelor ABC for giving us a great show to tune into this week. Our thoughts and prayers are being sent out to you, Sarah, you and your family. Um, I hope everything is going okay. But thank you everybody for tuning in. We'll see you all next week.